fishing by land, kayak, or boat. If we can get to it, we're going to fish it. And we're going to show you how we did it. Hello and welcome to Manly Fishing. Thank you for joining our very first show. My name is Terry Manley and I'm one of the hosts of the show. And today's topic is about how to set your drag properly on your reel. We're gonna show that right after this first clip. But right now, in this show, we're fishing in a lake in Texas. It's about a 40 acre lake. It's in the middle of August. It's 100 plus degrees and the water temperature is 94 plus degrees. We're Texas rigging big 12 inch worms and we're also going to show you how we rig this, the ins and outs of rigging a big Texas rig like this. But other than that, we're glad you're watching the show. We hope you learned something from our show and enjoy watching us catch 10 plus bass, 10 plus pound bass and uh, hope you join in to watch us further. What do you think about that, boy? Holy crap! Man! Man! That is a big fish! Look at that! Uh, I can get both my fists and yours too in there, Robert. That is a monster fish. He's got a belly on it. That might go 10 and a half, maybe 11. Hello and welcome back and we're going to show you the proper way to set your drag. A lot of people ask me, what do you mean proper way to set your drag? Well, a lot of people set their drag according to the size fish that they're catching. And partly that is true, but they're also setting their drag to the right. Uh, but the proper way to set a drag, uh, and the main reason for setting it, is to save your line and to save your rod. Uh, bass do have teeth. Contrary to what everybody says, it's hundreds of teeth on the top row. And the older and bigger they get, the longer and more pronounced they get. Uh, so when you're setting that hook, if you got your drag set way too tight, you're just gonna drag your line across those little teeth and you're gonna break your line off. And we don't want that to happen. If you got your drag set right, more than likely you're gonna get that fish into your kayak, in the boat, or up on land. Another reason for setting your drag properly, and the main reason I think is so important, is for your rod. If you over extend your rod into the, into the backbone, where you got your drag set so tight, you're over stretching your backbone here, and over time, you'll cause that rod to break. If you set your drag properly, you'll never damage your rod, you'll never break your rod, and more than likely, you'll, you'll never break your line. So the proper way to do this is just take your line and hook it to something. You can hook it to your dresser drawer in your bedroom. You can hook it to the front porch. Uh, you can hook it to some dumbbells. But the best way to do it is just to hook it to something on the back of your truck or your car or whatever. And I'm gonna flex that rod to a point that I feel is gonna get me a good hook set, whether it's a one pound bass or a 20 pound bass. And I'm gonna get a good hook set. I've got into the backbone but I'm not over flexing the rod to damage the rod or the guides or my line. Now, as I'm doing that, the line is going tick, 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 tick. So I back off a little bit. At that point, my line is just coming off really slow, like tick, 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 tick. If I, if I stretch and really get in that backbone, see, my drag is pulling off. So when I set that hook and that bass takes off, he's going to pull line off. He's not going to break my rod. He's not going to break my line. He's not going to break any of the guides off the rod. So I'm saving myself a lot of money. 
I'm also ensuring that I'm going to get that bass more likely back in my kayak or my boat because I didn't break my line or break my rod. So we're going to demonstrate this as Leia's going to get in the truck and she's going to take off like a bat out of you know what and simulate a bass after the hook set when he takes his run. Imagine a 10 pound bass all at once exerting 30 or 40 or 50 pounds of pressure on your rod and on your reel. So if your drag's not set right, something's going to give and you're either going to lose a rod or lose a guide or lose your line and lose that big fish on top of it and we don't want that. So hang on just a minute and we're going to show you how this works. As you can see, I've got my drag set where I want it and I've got a good bend in my rod for a good hook set. Now she's going to take off simulating a bass run and show you how I'm still in a 90 degree and I'm not going to damage my rod or damage my line. And believe me, this is one of my favorite rods. I wouldn't do this if I didn't trust this proper web setting. Okay, you ready, Lane? Go! Right. Holy crap, I got a big one. Oh, she's going to spoon me. Oh. Okay, as you can see there, I didn't damage my rod, I didn't damage my line, and I kept, I kept the bass off. Ten and a quarter. Woo! That is a fish, man. Man, beautiful. She came out. Right, Still picture real quick.
Oh my god. Holy crap, there's a double digit. Double digit for sure. Hello and welcome back. Uh, today we're talking about the Texas rig. And here what we're doing is we're throwing a 12 inch worm. We're using a 5 alt hook and we're throwing a half inch bullet weight. Uh, and you notice we have it running freely, and I want that to run freely. The reason why I want that to run freely, if you'll notice when I'm fishing, a lot of times I'm jerking it up and letting it flutter back down. Sometimes I'm jerking it up hard and letting it fall. A lot of times when you jerk one up hard, hard or get it high up in the water column, this bullet weight will slide down the line and not fall the worm down and leave it hanging up there slowly as it falls. A lot of times I'll get a lot better bite that way than just jerking the whole thing up slowly and letting it fall back down. So rigging that up properly or working it properly is a big plus in your favor. I'll usually hit an area and work it one way and then come back down an area and work it a different way and find out one of the ways work better than the other. But one thing that we do when we're rigging that worm, if you'll notice, we only have about a quarter of an inch, which just goes up to the very top of the hook. And what that's doing is when that weight comes down there and hits it, it's not pushing my worm back down or scrunching my worm up. Because when you put that worm on your hook properly, it should be running straight as an arrow down that hook. You want it to run straight. If it's all crunched up, something like that or whatever, it's going to spin and everything else in the water and not look natural. If that weight is coming in there and hitting the top of that worm and you've got a half inch or more, it's going to start squishing that up up there and putting kinks in it. And it's not going to, it's not going to swim through the water right. And it could also mess you up when you're getting your hooks in. Another thing that we're doing with these 12 inch worms is using, when you're using a, a 12 inch worm, use a big hook. You need when that bass to crunch down on there, to crunch down on it, so you expose that hook well and get it into the bass's mouth. When you're using a smaller bait, you can go to a smaller hook. You could probably even use a six or a seven, or even possibly an eight on the hook on that. I like using a five, it's plenty big enough. When the bass comes up and hits that, he sucks the whole thing in his mouth anyways. So when, you, when he closes his mouth, you're gonna get a hook set. You're gonna expose the hook and get him right in the mouth right in the top of that lip where you want to hit it. But anyways, I hope that helps you a little bit on the Texas rig. A lot of people will peg this off, sort of like a Carolina rig. Uh, that works very well too. But what we're doing is the water's really hot here and they're really hanging tight to cover. So I want to be able to control this bait very well. And with that bait hanging right there on my, uh, on my worm, I can really precisely get that bait where I want it throwing a Carolina rig or pegging that weight off, it's gonna be flipping and flopping, probably gonna make a larger noise when it hits the water and a lot harder to control. So running that, uh, running that good and straight and keeping that away from the bullet weight so that way it's not knocking it down really helps a lot. Another thing is I've got just enough of the top of that hook exposed that when that hits, it makes a little clacking noise. Their lateral lines are in the bass are gonna be picking it up and hearing it. It's a lot better. I like doing that better than using beads. Sometimes beads work good. But either way, that's how we work with rigging them today. And it worked very well. Now as far as the color goes, my color uh, depends on the clarity of the water. Uh, I usually put something in the water and see how deep I can see it. So you definitely want the bass to be able to see it. I mean, they're using their sight, they're using sound, uh, they're using their lateral line to pick up on this bait. So the danger of the water, I'm gonna use a darker bait so that way they can see it really good. The water here is fairly clear. We've been using a lot of the, the black and blue works good, but the one that's been working good since we're able to see three or four foot deep in the water is we've been using like motor oil, uh, a color like that or pumpkin has been working very well. So uh, but other than that, I hope that helps you uh, in the future fishing. And uh, now back to the show. Whoa, check it out. Woo! Whoa. That is a fish. That is a fish, buddy. Ugh. Oh, man. Okay. It's got to be 10 pounds. Shoot. Every bit of it. Nice. Look at that belly. Man, caught it on a manly rod. Maybe, that, maybe. That is why fish fear the rod. Yes. Starting over one of the reasons why. Okay. Uh, alligator! 
<laughs> Wish we'd had a camera on late just then, because man, she just, oh man, she hurt herself. She jumped so bad. Sorry about that, Lay. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you still hurting in your groin area? <laughs> Don't jump so fast. I was kidding. Uh, well, just know if one shows up, I'm leaving your house. I just jump up on top here. You can't get up. They don't climb. I've don't. seen them climb fences. <laughs> they climb a fence. That's all you understand. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit uh, about what you're doing and what we're doing here. And when I say go, you're going to take off like a bat out of hell and simulate a bass one. So, uh, but first, I'm going to explain a few things about what I'm setting up here, and then you, and I'll say go, and you just take off like a bat out of hell. Okay? Okay, what we're going to do here.